Well, hello, welcome back. This is Julie Baranek, host of the Seven Figure Builder Show. And I'm here today with my friend, Dr. Robin Graham. Hey, hey Robin. Hi, Julie. Finally, <laughs> we meet in person. It's so nice to see you. I know. I'm so excited because you have done so much. You're the creator of the Purpose to Results Success Without Social Method, which I'm so excited to dig in. The host of the globally acclaimed podcast, The Robin Graham Show. So congrats on that. Thank you. And, and best-selling author of You, Me, and Anxiety, Take Action Over Anxiety to Enjoy Being You. So welcome to the show. <laughs> Thank you. I'm happy to be here. And I'm honored, actually, to get to sit here with you and have a conversation. And I hope it has a meaningful impact on all of the listeners. Absolutely. As am I. And so I would ask, let's we just dive right in. But tell us a bit about what it is that you do. And I know the thought process for some people when they hear Business without social media may seem counterintuitive because we've had that pumped into our brains of like, you need this. So, you know, share with us what it is that you do. <laughs> so first and foremost, I work primarily with health and wellness providers, meaning health coaches, life coaches, or even therapists or health and wellness type practitioners. I have a doctorate in pharmacy by degree. And so that medical arena is just such a huge um, part of who I am and how I work with people. So we start with, as my program kind of hints, we start around your purpose and really fine tuning your personal brand, differentiating you from everybody else in the online space that is in your area of expertise or your niche. And from there, we define your soulmate client. And we look at so many other factors than the demographics or, you know, where they're shopping and things like that. But we really get deep into who are these people and what is the solution that you only you can solve for them the way you can solve it. And really merging the two, your personal brand and then your differentiation with those people. From there, we create create and or refine your offers, your pricing and all of that good stuff so that we can really influence the way people are going to buy from you. And that together leads us to your messaging and to all of your brand marketing strategies and all of the brand marketing strategies that I teach and we focus on throughout the time we work together are off social media. If my clients want to be on social media, we'll work on some of those nitty gritties, but what I always say, and this is such a good takeaway for anyone who doesn't want to be on social media, don't completely escape the platforms, but have a meaningful bio at the top link to your website. You now have five options to put links. So drive traffic to your email list, drive traffic to where you're hanging out. Maybe that's LinkedIn or YouTube or Pinterest and a link to your website and free resources. And then in your first three posts that you have, have them be something meaningful that people can take action on to drive them to where you want them to hang out with you, to learn more from you, or to really be part of your community. And that way you're not, not there, but you're also not there every single day, all day long. I love that. And it, it <laughs> it's so freeing to not be on social media, I have to say, like, I have a mm -hmm. love-hate relationship with all of it, which I think we all do. But, um, where do you incur? And, and I love that as far as framing up your social media accounts. So whatever you do have to put them to work for you, but you don't have to be there every day turning out content, but people can then find you, you know, if they want to mm -hmm. find you that way. Um, but where do you drive people? Because I think this is kind of like, I'm a marketing geek, so I love this stuff. But like, I think it's a foreign concept of where else should I send people if I'm not on social media? Mm -hmm. So I say your website, and I am going to stick with that till the day I die. And the reason I say that is because when people go to social media and it's more of a mindless scroll, they're looking for an escape. They're looking for entertainment. They're not necessarily going there to make a purchase. If they see something they're interested in, they may make a purchase. However, when people go to Google, they are ready for a solution. They've identified their problem. They're ready to get out their checkbook. They're ready or their credit card, and they're ready to buy. And so if you can increase your visibility on your website through SEO, search engine optimization, you're more likely to be found by Google. And this is why that work that I said I do with my clients up front around your personal brand and your soulmate client and your messaging and your offers are so incredibly important so that everything is clear and concise and consistent on your website. And when that happens, we can up your SEO get you ranked on Google and people can find you. 
blogging is, you know, people, you may hear people say blogging is dead. It's actually not dead. Because if you have a blog strategy, that can be the powerhouse, the cornerstone of your brand marketing strategy. And then everything comes back there, but each blog has a call to action so that people know specifically what you want them to do. Do you want them to join their your email list? Do you want them to download free resources? Do you want them to book a call? Do you want them to purchase something straight away from that blog post? So mm-hmm. driving traffic to the website is, to me, the primary, what should be the primary motivation for anyone who is a business owner. Absolutely. And the nice thing there is everything you're doing on your website is evergreen, where with social media, it's a constant hamster wheel that is gone in the next 30 seconds and replaced by something else. So you've, as you're building out that presence and you're building out your website and your blog, like to what you mentioned, you have that SEO juice that's working for you and continually working for you as it's providing value for your audience. Yes. And it's interesting, Julie, because the stats, like you said, the social media can kind of go away and your, your website is evergreen. And that is so true. The, the stats are, I think for 2024, they're expecting your only 7.6% of your followers are going to see your content on social media. So that's even decreased from last year. And also a post on Instagram is going to last max 48 hours, Mm -hmm. Facebook, maybe 18 hours. But when you put something on a blog post, you're going to get a minimum of two years. I still have a blog post from four years ago that is ranking number one. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's absolutely essential to have a place where you have evergreen content, where you have your cornerstone content that you can then repurpose everywhere else. If you do want to be on social media, but just from a blog post that can be content for your email marketing. It can be content for YouTube. It can be content for Pinterest. There's so much power when you have that platform that you own where you can create the content you want that provides value and nobody's going to take it away from you. Yeah. And that's critical. I I think so many people forget this or they don't wrap their heads around it is you own nothing on social media. Like we build up these followers and all of, you know, I've got a million followers or whatever. It doesn't really matter. But if your account gets hacked and you get blocked tomorrow, you have nothing. So I I agree with you 100% that the more you can drive to your website and ultimately, you know, collect email addresses or whatever it is that you can do, the more you actually own that stuff, right? Like people have given Mm -hmm. it to you versus Mm -hmm. Zuckerberg has it. (laughs) You're at the whims of whatever the algorithm is tomorrow. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And so how... How does that strategy um, in your mind come together for your clients? Like for, you know, do you drive people to the email list and there's their freebies and, you know, all of those pieces, like it feels like a lot sometimes, but what do you encourage people with that? It does feel like a lot sometimes, but I think if we can drive traffic to our website and then drive traffic to our email list, we have an opportunity for endless marketing. There are are always going to be people that we are now front of mind with. And anytime we're front of mind, we increase our chance of people purchasing from us, but we also increase the opportunity of referrals and we stay front of mind. And anytime we're front of mind, we're the first person somebody's going to think of when they're having a conversation and that person needs exactly what we sent in an email the day before. And then they say, oh my gosh, I haven't worked with her yet, but I got this email. So, and it sounds like you'd be a perfect fit contact her. And then you've got a new lead, potentially a new client. And that cycle can just continue forever and ever and ever, as long as you're in business, if you do it right. You have to have a strategy behind it, right? Like you're not going to just put people on your email list and then never talk to them. Right. So, but if you're creating content and and a blog post, this is what's key. People think that they have to be a writer to be to write blog post. No, you don't. People think that you have to write a long, extensive blog post. No, you don't. 300 words will get you enough content to rank if you do it right, if you have a strategy in place for key phrases that are going to be what your soulmate clients are actually searching for. And there's so many ways you can do that. And then I like to say a 600 word blog is about perfect. It gives you just enough juice to provide value and really be seen as an expert when you're 
solving a problem, you're providing value, and you're giving someone the answer that they need. But then when you have that call to action, you're not leaving them hanging. You're telling them exactly what's their next best step. Absolutely. And I know for me personally, I've struggled at times with writing blog posts or writing, you know, posts on social media or something like that. And um, I know a hack that I found that I'll share. I don't know what you found with your clients when I, I often get like lost in my brain when I'm trying to write these things out. And I felt that I'm much more surprise, surprise, a verbal processor. <laughs> like, if I can just record myself to a transcription, like Otter AI yes. or something like that is so much easier for me to just flow verbally. And then I have a blog post and it's written for me. And then I just polish it and it's out of my brain. It's organic, it's, you know, fresh and people get my personality versus just sitting there trying to use chat GPT or whatever else. But what do you find has worked for your clients? Okay. So that is, that is so huge. And I recommend that all the time. In fact, my husband's working on a book right now and I'm like, okay, you're struggling to write. So speak it, speak Mm -hmm. it, and then write it from what you've spoken, because it makes such a difference for those people who are more verbal processors versus audio. So that is one thing. The other thing is if you're if you're stuck, what are your clients saying to you? Use your voice a customer. And this could be from surveys you've done in the past. It could be a survey you do tomorrow to find out what their major pain point is, what they're struggling with. What are their wants, needs, and desires? What do people say? And, and this is something that I think is so key. I, I love processes and automations. And that's another thing that I work with my clients on so that we can streamline the business. The better the customer service we provide, the more likely they're to stay with us, but also the more likely they are to refer us. So it becomes a, a, a point of client retention as well as client referrals. And so when you think of your onboarding process, you should have a questionnaire. Get to know, even if it's just somebody who is booking a call with you, if you have an application or if you have a questionnaire, one or the other, I think applications are kind of nice because then you can really siphon through. People aren't expecting you work with just anyone. You have specific people you work with, but either one, application or questionnaire, ask the the questions that they're going to answer in a way that gives you information that you can then turn around and use as content. And that has helped me tremendously. Even using testimonials, what are people saying about you after they've worked with you? Because that gives you an opportunity to really focus on those key phrases that they're using. The language they're using then becomes your go-to for your SEO strategy and then getting found on Google by more of those people using the same terminology. A hundred percent. And I think that's massive what you just talked about. And I think it's something so missed by people is that application, that that questionnaire, that application, whatever that intake is for you is market research. And people don't view it that way where you can, like I do with my clients is it's very strategic point in time that people are coming into your world and you're using it to pre-qualify and filter people out. Mm -hmm. But ultimately you can look back in time and say, okay, of the clients that I'm getting that are amazing clients, how did I find them, right? How did they find me? And the more you can collect at that beginning stage, I think is so incredibly powerful. So I love that, you know, that tip for people. And I think that's really, really important. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I'm curious with the content, like how do you, what do you recommend for people when they think about keywords? Like, does that tie in with their SEO or should they worry about that? Not worry about that? Oh, absolutely. And, you know, it's, um <laughs> There are enough free tools out there that you can use to see what's going to give you the most opportunity to rank. But if you are, you know, let's just use the example of a, of a health and wellness provider, and maybe they focus on total body wellness. So they're working on mind, body, soul, everything. Mm-hmm. So total body wellness is going to be a phrase that they're using frequently in their copy. You don't want to use the same exact key phrase on every single page or in every single post. What you want to do is create a strategy where you're extrapolating on what people are looking for, what your specific soulmate clients need, want, desire from you or for their life, and then extrapolate on that. So it could be maintain total body wellness. It could be achieve total body wellness. It could be create total body wellness. Um, It could be... Um, total body wellness and mental health. But you want to create phrases that your people are searching for and then use those as your search engine optimized key phrases 
throughout the content that you create. So every page on your website and every post that you create is going to have its own unique key phrase. But the key is you can then link each post or other pages within your blog posts. And what that does is it tells, kind of creates a map for Google to say, oh gosh, this person created a content on this, but she also has content on this, which is in relation to this. And it just keeps your people going down like a rabbit hole when they come on your site so that Google sees that you're providing value. People are staying on your site. They want to learn from you. They are learning from you. And Google will continue to send people to you. Absolutely. That's the good rabbit hole, the value rabbit hole, right? (laughs) Absolutely. Absolutely. Because they see, oh my gosh, she answered this question. Well, I'm going to click on this Mm -hmm. because that's going to give me more information about that. And then I can, and they just keep going. Absolutely. And as you're working with people, once they get over that initial, you know, ideal client content, all that good stuff, oftentimes, you know, I'm sure they have other blocks that come up, you know, later on, but what do you see are the biggest gaps that people have or the things that they struggle with? A lot of, well, it's multifold. One, one person could be money mindset. Another person could be money mindset as well as they're stuck in this place of doubt and comparison Mm -hmm. and they just don't believe in what's possible. Um, And then you may have somebody who is just stuck in that place of a lack of clarity where they, they thought they had what they were supposed to be doing. They thought they knew their purpose. They thought they knew their calling, but People aren't coming in and they can't figure out why. And a lot of times that's clarity. They lack clarity. They lack specificity. So people are coming to their sites. They're confused. They're not 100% sure what they do, who they serve. And confusion is a block in terms, you know, confused people don't buy. So when, if you have confusion, you're basically blocking people from understanding what you do, and then they're not going to trust you and they're going to just disappear. So it's really important that you have have that clarity. But those, I would say those are the three buckets that most of my people say. And the other one, the fourth one I would say is strategy. They don't have a strategy. They don't know how to create a strategy. And so they're on social media and following people that are similar to them. And they're just taking in everything they're doing and they think they have to do everything that they're doing. So they're becoming overwhelmed, frustrated. Now they're overthinking. That overthinking is resulting in doubt. And they're just sitting in a place of comparison and procrastination because They've tried everything, but nothing's working because it wasn't aligned with their values or their business goals or their soulmate clients. And so we have to take a step back and say, okay, let's just break this all apart. Kind of like an onion. There's so many layers to a business. And if somebody has been in business for a while and they've tried all these things, but they're not working, we have to peel back those layers and get back to the place where the messaging is clear. We're no longer saying and doing what everybody else is. We're focusing solely on what you believe and what you know is going to resonate with your people, the people that you want to work with because you're going to feel fulfilled, but also that you know, without a doubt, you can help and serve. Absolutely. And that's not getting caught up in that shiny object syndrome where we're chasing like what everybody else is doing. And then in turn, you end up sounding like everybody else and then you lose your differentiators and then- you're not true to the things that you believe in your core values. And like, you just go down mm-hmm. a, a bad rabbit hole. But... A bad rabbit hole, yeah. <laughs> yes. Good and bad, right? You have to have exactly. polarity or nothing works. So this there you true. go. <laughs> and I know you're a big fan of podcasting. You have your own podcast, but how how has that helped your journey or how has that impacted your journey? Myriad ways. So first and foremost, I would say it really helps you be seen as an expert or authority in your niche. It gives you an opportunity to build really great relationships, which gives you opportunity for lead generation as well as referrals. And so I guess that's it. Really, it's that credibility and you build trust when you're in somebody's ear every single week. And People learn to to love you. You build that relationship and they also come into your email community. So then they're part of your community and they almost sometimes speak for you. They're your Mm -hmm. word of mouth referrals, but they're also there for you to nurture and continue to build that relationship and trust. And ultimately they purchase from you. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I know it's such a powerful venue and 
even going back to the SEO that you talked about earlier, like I, that's another yes. thing I love about it. <laughs> huge. It's huge. It's huge. Yeah. It really is. And what I love to do is, and you may do this too, Julie, is I take every podcast episode we do becomes an SEO blog post. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're repurposing every piece of content that we create. Nothing is just one and done. And that's such a great thing to be able to have this just constant source of content, whether it's a solo episode or it's an interview, there's always an opportunity for more content. And that's pretty cool. A hundred percent. And, and it's all original. Like there's nothing, yeah. every episode is a hundred percent original because it's conversation, which is really yeah, cool. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Um, and how has, you know, a lot of people in business struggle with either anxiety or struggle with you know, just looking for that piece, but how, how have you seen that impact, impact people in their business journey? Mm. You know, sometimes people already have anxiety. Other times entrepreneurship creates anxiety. So I have clients that fall into both realms, but that's where the mindset work comes into play. And I have a, a method that I use with my clients. Um, I know a lot of people know who Brooke Castile is and her CTFAR model. Mine is similar. However, we start with your beliefs and um, my faith, my faith is really important to me. And I, I do base a lot of my, my business on my faith. So we start with our beliefs and, you know, what is your belief system? Because if your belief system is off, whether that stems from someone, something someone has said to you in the past, or multiple people have said to you in the past, mistakes you've made or failures you're, you've experienced, or um, your, your faith or past experiences, just within your business, any of those things can influence what you believe about yourself and what's possible. And when you tap into your faith, we know that if we have faith in God, that anything is possible because anything is possible for him. Nothing is impossible for him, but things could be impossible for us. So all of that ties in, which then influences what we think and our thoughts influence our emotions. Our emotions then are going to empower the choices we make and that's the choices we make are going to determine our outcomes. So it becomes the cycle. So we want to try to hit that cycle at the beginning to break any of those negative thoughts. So I like to say we catch those negative thoughts, we challenge them, we change them, and we ultimately get more control over them and become more confident to make better decisions in our business. So that is one way that we navigate that anxiety. And then again, by being off social media and not having the distractions and the chaos that they create in our mind and how they stimulate doubt, then we can alleviate some of that anxiety as well. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And, and my faith is core to who I am too. So I love that approach and I love that yeah. things come into alignment and um, yeah, it's, it's very powerful. Um, and I, I, I want to ask, this is not a loaded question at all. <laughs> like from a medical perspective and my background is I was a nurse in high-risk labor and delivery. So we didn't talk about that, but I, you know, like I have a medical perspective, but yeah, from your perspective, from a medical perspective, how has the social media, like I'm intrigued by the fact that you are the off social media perspective, you know what I mean? Is that, is that mm -hmm. medically based? Is it just personal preference based? I guess that's what I'm trying to ask. Does that make sense? Oh, yeah. And it's a great question. Unfortunately, I don't have data or statistics to share with you, but we do know that the that the use of social media is addicting. And what happens is people will go on social media and when they get likes and they get engagement, they have a dopamine boost. So we're actually messing with the chemicals in our brain. So dopamine kind of makes us go up. So if you go up, you're going to come down. And the, the more you use social media, the more that blue light stimulates you and then you get these dopamine hits, but then that drop is so much greater mm -hmm. and it's more powerful because you've just completely demolished your, the balance, the chemical balance in your brain with your endorphins and those, those positive neurochemicals and the negative neurochemicals that are in your brain. So that is one of the reasons why, I mean, I have anxiety to begin with. That's why the title of my book, you, me and anxiety, but, um, it, then, so you throw that into it and then you start 
going into these places of doubt and comparison and feeling unworthy. And, you know, when you look at even in the past few years since COVID in 2020, the prevalence of anxiety has increased by 20, <laughs> by 25% and mostly yeah. in women and children. There's no way that social media didn't have an impact on that because where did people go to during that time? They went to their phones for entertainment and to see what everybody else was doing. Mm -hmm. How many people did you see that started posting every aspect of their life all of a sudden? And what we forget, especially if we're prone to anxiety or you know, just a negative mindset, because we're built, our brain is built with that negativity bias. And that's what used to protect our ancestors when they didn't have the means of protection that we have today. They didn't have the warnings that we have today. So when you think about that, you start to compare, but we forget that none of that's really reality. Yeah, I'm sure some of it is, but people are only sharing all those things to make themselves feel better because something else is lacking. So we forget to look at the big picture and it looks like everything is greener on the other side of the fence. And that is not ever true. There's always something off somewhere. So mm -hmm. we have to remember that perfection is not achievable here on earth. It simply isn't. And if we're striving to be perfect, we're losing sight in the fact that God created us in his image and he is perfect. And ultimately, ultimately we'll achieve that when we re reach eternal life. But if we are striving for perfectionism, we're saying that we've got it. We don't need God. And that isn't the case. We do need him in our everyday life. And that's why we were, you know, reflect on scripture and use scripture to guide us on our path and our journey, because without that, we're lost. At least I am. Maybe not everybody's <laughs> like me, but at least I am. <laughs> I'm right there with you. Absolutely. <laughs> I never want to generalize, but. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. And I think that's important. Multiple perspectives there, but absolutely the faith-based, but also with the social media. And that's something we practice as well. I mean, of course I'm on social media, but my youngest, she's 16. She still doesn't have it. And I'm like adamant. I'm like, no, there's so much more damage that is happening. I don't care what your friends are doing. I don't care. Like they're not my children. And what we've seen personally, you know, just the impact in these kids, it's just insane how it just changes how they're hardwired. And it's funny, my husband and I, as we go out to dinner, whenever we see a family with kids that are not on social media. And I'm like, we go over and we tell them every single time as off or we buy them dinner or whatever. It's like just to feed that positivity of like, mm -hmm. thank you for being a respectful <laughs> young man who, you know, we did it two nights ago. So it's, mm -hmm. it, it just has such an impact in our society that I don't think we have any clue of. So no. I love that we don't need it necessarily, you know? And I feel like everyone has been lied to. You know, when you listen to people, I, I've i never had a coach who said, well, you, you can't be on social media. You mm -hmm. have to be on social media. You can't not be on social media. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you have to be there and you have to do videos and you have to do this and you have to do that. There are multi-million dollar, billion dollar businesses out there that are not on social media. Mm -hmm. I have met women who are so incredibly successful. They're not on social media and they don't have a brick and mortar. So there are ways to be found. You can be visible without it. And if it is not healthy for you, and if it's not helping you grow, if you're not getting clients from social media, is that where you need to be? And it really becomes soul searching. I had a definite call to get off. Like God mm -hmm. clearly spoke to me. And as crazy as that may sound to some people, like it was so clear to me that he was saying, get off. And I had like, multiple things happened at the same time to, to really solidify what I thought I was hearing to get off. And I, I just believe full heartedly that you can build your business in a simplified way, streamlined way, and you can ach achieve the success you want without the additional presser pressures and stressors of things like social media. Absolutely. And I'm curious, as you're, you know, you've accomplished so much in your business, personally, professionally, but how do you define success? What does that look like for you? For me, success is having a positive impact. 
being part of creating that greater good, the ripple effect of good in the world. If, if at the end of the day, I have helped someone that can then turn around and help someone else to do by doing good, then I've done my job. It, to well, me, it's not about the dollar signs. It just, it just isn't. It's about yeah. the, do I, do I appreciate it? Yes, of course. Do I need it to live? Yes, of course. Do I give back? Yes, of course. But at the end of the day, for me, what I determine as success is the impact that I've had. Absolutely. And if you had the attention of the whole world for five minutes, what would you tell them? <laughs> I would say, open your Bible. <laughs> I mean, there's so much in there that can help people. And I think there are so many people that are searching for fulfillment, searching for happiness, searching for things in their life that they're doing all of these things and they're searching in all the wrong places. And it's just not achievable if we don't have what God intended for us to have and to live the way he intended for us to live. He created us in his image. And there's there are so many scripture verses that we can go to that will guide us and give us comfort, hope, reassurance, strength, knowledge, wisdom. If you're a believer, you have the gift of the Holy Spirit, and there's nothing more powerful than that. And I think with all of the mental health challenges that our society is facing, we need to get back to the basics. And that foundation is faith. A hundred percent. I completely agree with you. And how can people find you online? Like how can they come work with you? My website is the best place. You can find everything about me at the Robin Graham.com. It's Robin with a Y and Graham like the cracker. So it's the R O B Y N G R A H A M dot com. There's a resource page under the services tab where you can access a plethora of free resources and information on how to grow a business without social media. And then you can access the podcast and my book there as well. Awesome. Awesome. And we'll have all the links below in the show notes. But thank you, Robin, for being on today. This was truly informational and, you know, enriching. And I really appreciate the conversation with you. Thanks so much, Julie. It was an honor to be here with you. I appreciate it. Of course. And if you found value in this episode, please do share it. That's how people find us. And you can find me at sevenfigurebuilder.com. And I will see you on the next episode.